this video, we will cover how IPsec site-to-site VPN works on the GWN routers and explain the security parameters involved to establish the VPN tunnel for data protection. We will also demonstrate how to configure IPsec site-to-site -site VPN connection between two GWN routers. IPsec is a suite of security protocols that work together to protect traffic over a network. The security features provided by IPsec enable an enterprise to extend its network resources across a public network for remote workers and branch offices. The security features include authentication, confidentiality, data integrity, and anti-replay. These features are provided by security protocols to verify the origin of the data, keep it secret, and ensure it has not been tampered with. In an IPsec site-to-site -site VPN connection, as shown in this example, a secure tunnel is established between two routers to extend corporate resources to a branch office network. The two routers should be configured with the remote private networks to determine which traffic should be sent through the secure tunnel. The security parameters of the IPsec tunnel should also be defined. It is important that the security protocols selected on both routers match for the security association to complete successfully. To establish an IPsec tunnel, the devices use a protocol called Internet Key Exchange to negotiate the security protocols that will be used for the IPsec tunnel. This process involves two phases. In phase one, the two routers authenticate each other and negotiate the protocols to use for encryption, authentication, and hashing. Phase one creates a secure tunnel for management traffic. This results in a secure tunnel used by Phase 2 to negotiate the security associations that will be used to protect data traffic. Basically, a security association is a collection of encryption cipher, hashing algorithm, and key and material that are negotiated by the two routers to protect data in transit. We will cover these security protocols in more detail when configuring the IPsec tunnel from the web interface of the routers. To demonstrate how to configure IPsec site-to-site -site VPN on GWN routers, we will use this topology. Basically, we will need to create a VPN tunnel between the router in the corporate office and the GWN router in the branch office to allow users in the branch office to access the network resources in the corporate office. First, I will go ahead and log into the web interface of the GWN 7062 router in the corporate office. VPN configuration page is available under VPN. To create an IPsec site-to-site -site VPN, we need to use the VPN client's configuration page. Then, we click on Add. I will assign a name to this VPN connection to easily identify it, especially when there are many VPN connections created on the same router. We set connection type to IPsec site-to-site. -site. Under Remote Server Address, we enter the IP address of the remote router in the branch office. In the example we are trying to configure, the remote router has the IP address 10.0.0.75. Next, we select the interface that will be used for VPN connection over the public network. The destination option specifies the local networks that the remote router is allowed to access on this router. For instance, if we decide to allow users in the branch office to access the default LAN, we simply check the default LAN and leave the other VLANs unchecked. GWN routers support version 1 and version 2 of Ike. Ike version 2 is faster, more secure, and more reliable. Ike version 2 also supports NAT traversal, which is crucial for a VPN connection when you have your VPN router sitting behind another router that is doing NAT or network address translation. You can use Ike version 1 in case you want to create a VPN connection with a third-party router that does not support Ike version 2. When you select Ike version 1, you need to define the negotiation mode. There are two modes, main and aggressive. Main mode is a bit slower but more secure. Aggressive mode is faster but less secure because it sends some information in clear text, such as the authentication hash. If security is your concern, you should choose main mode when using Ike version 1. For our setup, we will use Ike version 2. Next, we need to define the lifetime in seconds for the IPsec tunnel. Lifetime is used to control when the routers need to re-negotiate the IP security association. This ensures that the IPsec tunnel will use the encryption keys for a limited amount of time. The value configured in Ike lifetime on this router should match the Ike lifetime on the remote router. In other words, we need to configure the same value for lifetime in both routers. As we discussed earlier, 
IPsec negotiations take place in two phases, Phase 1 and Phase 2. The main goal of Phase 1 is to establish a secure encrypted channel through which the routers can negotiate Phase 2. Keying operations in Phase 1 tend to be heavier than in Phase 2. In Phase 1 negotiations, the routers exchange credentials for authentication, so both routers must use the same pre-shared key. The routers identify each other and negotiate to find a common set of Phase 1 settings to use. Next, we define the encryption algorithm for data confidentiality. AES, or Advanced Encryption Standard 256, is the most secure algorithm, and we highly recommend using it for your IPsec tunnel. The hash algorithm is used for data integrity to ensure the data has not been tampered with. SHA2 that produces a 256-bit message digest is more secure than either SHA1 and MD5. So for our IPsec tunnel, we will use SHA2 with 256-bit message digest. Next, we need to specify the DH group to use for key exchange. Diffie-Hellman allows the two routers to securely set up a shared secret key which is then used to encrypt and decrypt transmitted data. Generating a shared secret key is a complex process that involves the exchange of public keys, which are then used with the private keys to compute symmetric keys. Diffie-Hellman Group 14 is very strong and secure, but there are other key lengths as well. The higher the Diffie-Hellman Group number, the more secure it will be, but it will also be more intensive in terms of CPU resources. So, we will just keep the default DH Group 14. The reconnect option allows the routers to renegotiate the ICSI security associations before they expire. We can also specify the number of reconnects before the IPsec tunnel restarts. Dead peer detection works as a keep alive mechanism to verify the remote router is reachable. Periodically, the router will send an encrypted message to the remote router which needs to respond back with an ACK message. Delay time specifies the interval in seconds between DPD messages, which are sent only when the IPsec tunnel is idle. Idle time defines the maximum time that the router should wait before considering the remote router to be dead. DPD action determines the action to take after DPD times out. By default, the hold option means the router will take no action and will simply wait for the Ike session to time out. It will just wait for the Ike lifetime to expire. You can use the hold option when your internet connection is not stable to prevent the routers from going through the CPU intensive process of negotiating and regenerating the keys for the IPsec tunnel. Instead of hold, we can choose clear or restart. The clear option will stop the Ike session and tear down the IPsec tunnel. The restart option will try to re-establish the Ike session when DPD timeout occurs. We will just set it up to hold for our configuration. So now that we set up the security parameters for Phase 1, we need to configure the parameters for Phase 2. Essentially, we need to define the traffic to send over the VPN tunnel and how to encrypt that traffic. Under Local Subnet, we specify the local subnets on this router that are allowed to access the VPN connection. If you have multiple VLANs created on this router, you can use this option to add the VLANs that are allowed to send traffic over this VPN tunnel. In this example, I will add the default VLAN only. Under Local Source IP Address, we enter the VPN IP address. You can choose any subnet for VPN connection as long as it does not conflict with an existing subnet. So, we will use the subnet 10.20.20.0 and we will assign this router the IP address 10.20.20.1. The Remote Subnet option allows us to configure the destination subnets that are accessible through this VPN tunnel. You basically enter the private subnets of the remote router. In our example, the remote router is using the subnet 172.16.0.0/24. If the remote router has more VLANs that we need to access through the VPN connection, we simply click on Add Remote Subnet. So, after we confirm the traffic that needs to be sent over the VPN tunnel by specifying the source and destination subnets, we need to configure the security protocols that will be used to protect that traffic. First, we define the security association lifetime. This ensures the secret keys in the security associations are used only for a limited amount of time. The routers will basically renegotiate new secret keys after the lifetime expired. Remember, earlier we talked about Ike lifetime setup for phase one. The Ike lifetime for phase one should always be greater than the lifetime we define for phase two. 
and this is because the process of generating keys in phase one is more intensive in terms of CPU resources. In other words, most of the heavy work is done in phase one. It is important that you configure both routers with the same value for lifetime to avoid disruption to your VPN connection. Currently, GWN routers only support the security protocol ESP, which provides data encryption, data integrity, authenticity, and anti-replay check, which makes it more secure than the other security protocol, which is authentication header protocol. For the encryption and hash algorithms, we will just use the default ones. We will use tunnel for the encapsulation mode. Tunnel mode is more secure than transport mode, which is not yet supported on GWN router. Tunnel mode encrypts both the payload and the IP header of the original packet. PFS stands for Perfect Forward Secrecy. When enabled, PFS prevents the routers from using the generated keys in Phase 1 from being used in Phase 2 and forces the routers to compute new keys for Phase 2 using Diffie-Hellman algorithm. This means that Phase 1 and Phase 2 always have different keys, which makes the VPN connection even more secure. If you decide to use PFS, it must be enabled on both routers and both must use the same DH group. For this example, we will just disable it to save the CPU resources that would be used to run the DH algorithm. Now, let's save those settings. Next, we need to log into the router in the branch office to set up the VPN tunnel. We go to VPN Plants and click on Add. We assign a name to this VPN connection and we set the connect type to IPsec. The IP address of the remote router in the corporate office is 10.0.0.74. We will change IP to match the version 2 we selected in the router in the corporate office. The Phase 1 parameters must match the ones we configured on the other router. Under Phase 2, we enter the local subnets on this router. This router has the local subnet 170. 2.16.0.0.0 slash 24. We will assign the P address 10.20.20.2. Remember the other router was configured with the VPN IP address 10.20.20.1. The default subnet on the remote router is 192.168.80.0 slash 24. We will just leave the default settings for the rest of the settings to match the ones configured on the remote router. Then we save the changes. We give the routers a few seconds to establish the VPAN connection. Connected status means the VPAN connection is live and the two routers are ready to protect the traffic that we defined. Under Operations column, we have the options to disconnect the VPAN tunnel, edit the settings or delete the existing configuration for the IPsec tunnel. One more thing that we need to configure is to allow VPN access to the LANs created on this router. So we will go to Network Settings, LAN, and select the default LAN. As you can see, the default LAN does not have access to VPN tunnel, so we have to enable it manually by simply checking the box for the IPsec tunnel and save the chain. So to ensure the VPN tunnel is working correctly, we will use this computer in the corporate office to ping a computer in the branch office. The ping results are successful. Ping queries from the computer in the branch office should yield the same result. This concludes today's video guide. In the next video, we will talk about site-to-site -site VPN with OpenVPN. Thank you for watching.